Welcome to Love and Abuse, the show about navigating the difficult relationship. From simple disagreements to emotionally abusive behaviors, you deserve respect and kindness. All the information on this show is meant for educational purposes only. Always seek a professional for your mental health and well-being, and always pick your battles wisely. I'm your host, Paul Coliani. Thank you for joining me for another episode of Love and Abuse. You'll notice that the intro has changed if you've been listening a while because uh, it fits more in. It fits more information in the beginning, so I don't have to repeat it. <laughs> and uh, it describes the show going forward because it is all about difficult relationships. It's all about trying to navigate through the weeds of a difficult relationship and difficult people. So here we are talking about difficult relationships and difficult people and my goal is to make sure that you're either improving your relationship or navigating through one to get to the next phase of that relationship or maybe even leaving a relationship that's not working. I don't encourage leaving a relationship. I actually encourage working on it until you're exhausted <laughs> and then you get out. You might have to get out. You might have to leave or Something changes, some change in direction of the relationship or the person that's being difficult or the both of you, maybe both of you are being difficult and you have to figure out what to do next. That's what this show is all about. But again, I emphasize trying to work on a relationship because most people, I mean, you wouldn't listen to a show unless you wanted to work on the relationship uh, or improve it in some way or figure out what to do next. Most people tune into shows like this or read material like this to figure out how to make their relationship better. So if uh, anyone ever listens to this and they think, well, you're trying to drive people apart or my partner listened to this or my friend or my family member listened to this and now they're no longer in my life. It's your fault. It's not my fault. <laughs> I'm here to encourage love and connection. I'm here to encourage intimacy and romantic relationships. I'm, I'm here to encourage healthy communication and of course, healthy boundaries. When you have healthy boundaries, there might be a problem because some people don't want you to have healthy boundaries. And if you don't have healthy boundaries, they have power over you. So I talk about stuff like that, but this is all about personal power. This is all about you feeling good in yourself and confident enough in yourself to make decisions that are right for you so that you can have a somewhat satisfying life, if not happy. And if we're in a relationship that makes us unhappy, what's the point of the relationship? We have to work on it. We have to figure it out or we have to leave. So that is a personal choice. When you get to the point where you've tried everything, and you're just exhausted, it might be time to leave. Or at least say the things that you haven't said yet. Say the thing like, you know what, I'm sick of this behavior. I won't take it anymore. And I know there are relationships that you can't do that in. Some relationships, some people might be aggressive. Some people might be dangerous. This is why I say, at the beginning of every episode, pick your battles wisely. You don't want to pick battles with people where you might be on the receiving end of some hurtful behavior or worse. Sometimes you do have to get away from people that are that hurtful just to protect yourself. And uh, that's tough. That can be very tough if you're in a situation like that. But I'm here to talk about how to get through the difficulties of most relationship problems. How many problems come up in a relationship? Uh, sometimes daily. Some people have daily problems. I'm in a relationship now. I just got engaged. Thank you. <laughs> I am engaged and I'm very happy. We've known each other a while and I believed it was time and we both feel really good about it and that's where we're heading. But every previous relationship was a failure and a success. A failure that I created because of who I used to be and how I used to show up and a success from what I learned. And I hope they learned something too, not to deal with the behaviors that I put out there, not to deal with people 
who do the things that I used to do because I used to be emotionally abusive. If you've been listening a while, that's who I was. And it took a lot of relationship failures, a lot of breakdowns and breakups for me to get to a point where I finally took responsibility and said, I am the common denominator of all these relationship problems I'm having. Me, I am the one. Even if they did cause some of it, I'm still taking responsibility for my role. I'm not even focused on them. I'm not even focused, I mean, in the sense that I'm not looking at them to blame them for anything. And I think that's one of the most important details, one of the most important components when you're in a relationship is not to focus on another person as them being the problem for everything that happens, even though sometimes they are the problem for everything that happens. But the reason I say, hey, take responsibility for what you do and what you think and how you show up in the relationship is that it allows you to keep your power. You can look at somebody else and say, it's their fault. They're doing this to me. And again, it can be, it can be their fault. It can be 100% their fault. They could be causing all the problems. But don't look at them and say, unless they change, I'm going to be unhappy. Because as soon as you do that, you give it up. You give up your power. When you look across the field at um, the other team and you say, they need to stop playing so well, otherwise we're going to lose. Then what ends up happening is that you're so focused on somebody else changing for you that it takes away the energy inside of you to do something different, change something inside of you. And I'm not saying you have to change for anyone. I'm saying that if what is happening isn't working, then you might have to do something different instead of waiting for someone else to change. The other team isn't going to change their strategy so that you can win. They want to win. In the case of an emotionally abusive relationship, the person doing the hurtful behavior doesn't want to lose. They want what they want regardless of what you want. And because of that, they're going to keep playing the game that they're playing until something big happens. That could be you getting your power back. Hey, you better stop that because I won't accept it anymore. It could be a boundary that you put out there. It could be you saying, look, I'm going to leave for a week or a month because you're being hurtful and I want you to stop. It could be a simple conversation that you haven't had yet. It could be something like that. It could be you saying, um, do you realize that when you do that, it hurts me? And now that you know it hurts me, will you stop? It could be something like that. And some people will respond to that in a nice way, in a healthy way, and some people won't. Some people will turn it back on you and say, well, you hurt me too. And I've talked about that in the past, but that's a, a great conversation starter. Not that it's a fun conversation, but it might be a way to start it. But it is a way to at least communicate that you need something to change in the relationship. And you are probably willing to make those changes. If you're listening to a show like this, you are probably willing to make changes so the relationship will improve. And sometimes that, that needs to happen. Sometimes we need to change to see different results. We all know that definition of insanity. If you do something over and over again and you don't change what you're doing, uh, it's a, a insane. <laughs> I, I totally messed it up, but you know what I mean? It's like um, if you have the same reactions to hurtful or abusive behavior over and over again, and you're hoping and wishing and praying they stop doing the behavior based on your reactions, but they don't change, then what you're doing isn't working. Your reactions aren't affecting them. That's why sometimes it's necessary that if you want to continue a relationship with somebody, that it is sometimes necessary for you to make the changes in order to see change. Now, that doesn't mean submit. It doesn't mean accept and be resilient to terrible behavior. It doesn't mean that at all. It means gaining the confidence and the strength inside yourself to not accept anything less than what you are worth and what you deserve. 
because you deserve, I say it every time, respect and kindness. That's so easy to respect someone, to be kind to someone. That's so easy and so many people have difficulty doing it. But you deserve it. Everyone deserves it. Even people that have been hurtful deserve it because they can change. But some don't want to. And some, you can be respectful and kind to them all day long and they won't change. And uh, sometimes you can't do anything about it. Sometimes there's just nothing you can do. And when they won't change and when you've asked them to stop hurting you or stop doing that thing that doesn't feel good, that feels like um, they're blaming you and guilting you and just making you feel bad all around, Sometimes you just have to say, I can't take it anymore. I can't put up with this anymore. That's what I call the threshold in my Healed Being program. I help emotionally abusive people who want to change, change. And that is one of the lessons I talk about. The person you're hurting is going to reach a threshold, let alone you're already pushing them away. The person that you're hurting, you're already pushing them away If you're wondering why your emotional connection is waning and they are distancing themselves from you, it's probably because of something you're doing. I'm talking to the emotionally abusive person, the hurtful person, the the person that believes they're right and they can do no wrong. That's how I felt. I believed I was right. I could do no wrong. And if my partner would only listen to me, we would be happy. Yeah, I... I just had that in my head. If they only listened to me, that person would be happy. And because I had that philosophy, I guess you could call it, in my head, that is what I espoused and pushed upon them. And um, in different ways. I didn't say, if you only listen to me. I would just find ways to manipulate and make them feel bad if they didn't do what I wanted them to do. And I had sky-high standards. They could never meet them. So every time I expected or hoped that they would do something that I wanted them to do, and they didn't do it, they didn't meet my expectation, I made sure that they felt bad for not doing that. That's a terrible place to put someone. And I feel, I feel awful doing that to such good people. I don't come on here telling you I'm perfect. I did this stuff to people that were kind to me and that loved me and tried hard to make me happy. And they couldn't succeed. They couldn't succeed because I wasn't um, happy inside myself. I had problems. I had fears. I had traumas that I had to deal with. And that's no excuse, but it was true. I had old traumas. I had old behavior patterns and very unhealthy coping mechanisms that, um, didn't help me in uh, my adult relationships. Things happened as a child that I learned and I took those things and brought them into my adult relationships and ruined them. And one day I finally said, I got to stop. I got to stop doing whatever I'm doing. I didn't know what I was doing, but I just said it because my relationships kept failing. And that's when I said, I am the common denominator. Everybody leaves me. Everyone gets upset around me, you know, my partners. They get upset around me and they eventually want to be on their own. I pushed them away and I always blamed them in the past until now, until, well, a decade ago, I stopped blaming them. I stopped looking at them and focusing on them and believing that they were the issue because they weren't. Even if they had issues, even if they brought issues into the relationship, it doesn't matter. The way I showed up was bad. It was hurtful. It was abusive. This is why I do this show. I don't want relationships to go down that same road. And there's so many out there that do. I get messages every day. Yes, I got your message. If you're listening, I get messages every day. And I want to address them all. Everything that you send me, everything that you talk about, uh, or at least in your emails to me, everything that you have gone through in your relationship, in your life, I want to address. I want to help you get through those things those uh, challenges. And when we can figure out a healthy, empowering way to get through 
life's challenges and especially relationship issues, then we feel better in ourselves even if the relationship doesn't work. And I think that's an important component to life in general and to feeling good about ourselves, in ourselves, feeling like somebody isn't taking away our power because as soon as we're hurt, that means someone's taking away our power, at least in a relationship. If somebody hurts us in a relationship, we've lost some of our power. And power has many meanings, but I look at it as not being able to stand up for ourselves and say, no, I won't take anymore. Even if you don't say it to them, just say it inside yourself. No, I won't take anymore. This is not going to happen like this anymore. This has to change. And when you do that inside your mind or to somebody else, if you say that to somebody else, something changes inside you because you're willing to risk the relationship so that someone will treat you right. Someone will treat you the way you deserve. Now, what often happens in emotionally abusive relationships is that um, the victim of emotional abuse will feel that they don't deserve better behavior. They don't deserve better treatment. They don't feel like they're worthy. And uh, that's because of the uh, slow drip feeding of emotionally abusive behavior. It really starts to wear you down and erode you from the inside out because uh, you start believing what this other person is saying about you. You start believing some uh, untrue things. You're stupid. You're ugly. You're this, you're that. Even if they don't say those words, you can really feel them. Somebody can make you feel a certain way, even if you are headstrong, even if you're brilliant and now you feel weak and not confident about yourself and that worth, that self-worth slowly erodes over time. And as that self-worth erodes, you might start to believe that you don't deserve any better treatment because you might start to believe that maybe you're not as worthy as you thought you once were. And uh, that's a very scary place. And I never, ever want you to go to that place, even though I know so many people listening right now feel that way. And a lot of other people feel like um, it's their fault or they're wondering if it's their fault. Is it me? Did I do that? Am I doing something wrong? Am I not doing enough? I don't know how many times I've heard that over and over again. And I, you know, my heart goes out to you. If you've said that, if you've shared that with me, if you've thought that in your mind and you feel that in your heart, my heart goes out to you. Because when you're trying to improve yourself and show up in a different way just to satisfy somebody who doesn't seem to ever be satisfied, then you're doing all you can. And it's not going to be about you not trying. It's not going to be about you showing up in a way that's not good enough. Because if somebody who tries to improve themselves or improve the relationship is good enough, is worthy, you are lovable and deserve kindness and respect because you're trying. And the people that don't try and just know they're right, whether you think they're right or not, if they know they're right and they want to make you feel bad, it doesn't matter to them. That's not right. I mean, it's hard to see it when you're in it, but it's not right. It's not right when one person knows they're right and they can and they can do no wrong and the other person is wrong and they have to listen to that person who believes they're right. It's just uneven. It's, it's not an equal partnership. When you have two adults in a relationship, you're both driving the same ship, the relationship. You're, you're both driving that. And because you're both driving it, you are both responsible for keeping the ship afloat. But if one of you is drilling a hole through the bottom and the water keeps coming in and the other person keeps putting the corks in the holes trying to prevent the water from coming in, it's a never-ending trauma, it's never-ending stress, and it just doesn't end until you say, look, I can't take it anymore, I'm, I'm getting off this ship. Or, I'm gonna get off this ship unless you stop. 
And I know I'm emphasizing that a little bit. And I don't want to tell you that's what you should do because there are some people that you definitely have to pick your battles wisely with. But I want you to feel it inside. I want you to tell yourself that you are worthy and that you deserve better behavior if somebody is mistreating you. And I know that um, some people listen to this show that are doing the hurtful behavior and they want help changing that. I'm, I'm here for you too. If you are willing to take that step to change that behavior, wow, that is a huge step forward. I, I'm telling you from personal experience because I didn't want to change. And when my marriage ended, I said, I have to. She reached her threshold. She reached her breaking point. And at that point, I realized, wow, if every relationship has failed and my marriage, which is supposed to last for the rest of my life, has failed, I must be doing something wrong. And most of the time when I hear from emotionally abusive people or people that have hurt their partners or other people they love, most of the time they'll tell me uh, they couldn't take it anymore. They couldn't take my behavior. And that's when the spark ignited in me that I needed to change. And it always feels too little too late, at least to the victim of hurtful behavior. It feels too little too late. You should have changed when you saw me crying every night, every week for months or years. You should have changed then. Why didn't you change then? And that's the big question. If they really care about me, why aren't they changing? If they loved me, why would they hurt me? One of the most popular common questions that I receive. If they love me, why are they hurting me? That's a great question. And when I was in that position of being the hurtful person, looking in hindsight, loving the person I was with, not in a healthy way, but I loved her and I wanted to be with her. But why didn't I change when I saw her suffer? Here's the answer. The answer is some people don't change because they believe they're right and they believe the victim is doing it to themselves. I know that's uh, it's really odd, but think about this. If the person who believes they're right, they're the hurtful person, and they believe that if you do something differently, we'll be happy, but you don't do that thing differently, then they see it as your fault. That's how I did. I saw my partners making themselves unhappy because all they had to do is exactly what I wanted them to do. And if they did that, they would be happy. So my delusion was if my partner did what I wanted her to do, then she would be happy. And because she's not doing that, she's unhappy. So that's not my fault. They're totally delusional. That was me because I believed I was right. But that might solve a mystery for you, or maybe that makes you question it more, but that's normally what happens. In most cases that I've worked with people, that's normally what happened. They believe they're right. The emotionally abusive person, the hurtful person, they believe they're right. And they also believe that this other person that they claim to love, that they claim to care about, if they only changed, if they only did what I told them to do and they kept doing what I told them to do, they would be happy. And so they carry this delusion with them that the only path for their partner or loved one to be happy is to do exactly what they want them to do. And so the victim of hurtful behavior, they keep feeling like they're being judged and feeling being controlled. And no matter what they do, it's not right. And uh, it doesn't even matter when they do something that does fit the mold or the criteria that the, that the other person wants. It's still not good enough because now they want more or they want something different or you couldn't be perfect for long enough. That's what happens is even if you meet their criteria, you're going to mess up according to them in their eyes and their perception. You're going to mess up. And because of that, they're going to make you feel bad again. And they're going to see you being unhappy, you crying, if that's what happens. And if you are in that down state, in that powerless state, they're going to look at you and say, well, why don't you just do what I tell you to do? 
That's what they're going to think. And maybe that's what they'll say. So it's very important if you are a victim to this kind of behavior and you're wondering, why don't they stop? If they see me suffering and they say they love me, why don't they stop? 99% of the time, I'm going to say that's why. They honestly believe that you would be happier if you just did what they wanted you to do. And because of that, the cycle of hurtful behavior, of emotional abuse, doesn't change. It stays the same. And every time they see you unhappy, oh, it's just something you are doing to yourself. How do you get out of that? That's what I teach on this show. I mean, uh, this episode is 108. So I have 108 or 107 episodes before this that help you through that kind of stuff. And I'm going to continue creating episodes like this to continue helping you through navigating the difficult relationship. That's what I'm here to do for you. So I hope that you got something from this episode. I normally read an email. I normally read a message or talk about a subject that somebody brought up with me. And I've got a ton of them. And I'm going to continue making these episodes, continuing to address what you are going through out there. And if you get one gold nugget from any of these episodes, maybe that'll be the change you need or the difference that makes the difference. I hope it does. And I wish you much healing through whatever you're going through and much strength for what you're going through and what you may have to go through in order to heal what might be going on in your relationship. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for listening. I can't wait to talk with you again. It'll be very soon. I, I used to spread these out really far and trying to make more episodes. So I'll be back very soon. Share this with others that might benefit. Love and Abuse is the official podcast of The Mean Workbook, an assessment and healing guide for difficult relationships. The workbook gives you your mean score, which tells you the exact behaviors causing you to leave so many interactions feeling bad. Now you can pinpoint the specific, unhealthy, and even toxic behaviors in your relationship to help you take the next best steps for you and those you care about. Visit loveandabuse.com for more information. If you've discovered that you are doing the hurtful behaviors to someone that you care about and you would like to change that about yourself, sign up for the Healed Being program over at healedbeing.com. The course comes with a private online group where I and others will give you direct support for as long as you need. You'd be amazed at how good you feel when you're able to stop making those you love feel bad. That's healedbeing.com. This show exists to remind you that you are not alone and you're not going crazy. You deserve to be treated with respect and kindness. You deserve honesty and sincerity. You deserve to be treated as worthy and significant. Because you are. We'll talk again soon. Mm-hmm.